Hello students of class 10. I welcome you all, on behalf of online learning media. This video is co-presented by Raghav Tuition Center. Raghav Tuition Center is one of the leading tuition center of Southwest Delhi. Each and every student studying at Raghav Tuition Center has secured more than 75% of marks in their academic examination. We cater students from class 6 to class 10. For free demo class call us or WhatsApp us at 8901127595. Today, we will be covering syllabus of science subject for class 10. Chapter 1 that is chemical reactions and equations. Consider the following situations of daily life and think what happens when milk is left at room temperature during summers. An iron, pan, nail is left exposed to humid atmosphere. Grapes get fermented. Food is cooked. Food gets digested in our body. We respire. In all the situations mentioned previously, the nature and the identity of the initial substance have somewhat changed. We have already learnt about physical and chemical changes of matter in our previous classes. Whenever a chemical change occurs, we can say that a chemical reaction has taken place. You may perhaps be wondering as to what is actually meant by a chemical reaction. How do we come to know that a chemical reaction has taken place? Let us perform some activities to find the answer to these questions. Activity 1 clean a magnesium ribbon about 3 to 4 centimeters long by rubbing it with sandpaper. Hold it with a pair of tongs. Burn it using a spirit lamp or burner and collect the ash so formed in a watch glass as shown in figure. Burn the magnesium ribbon keeping it away as far as possible from your eyes. What do you observe? You must have observed that magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling white flame and changes into a white powder. This powder is magnesium oxide. It is formed due to the reaction between magnesium and oxygen present in the air. Therefore the chemical equation for the above reaction is Mg plus O2 equals Mg, O2. Activity 2 Take lead nitrate, solution in a test tube. Add potassium iodide, solution to this. What do you observe? Activity 3. Take a few zinc granules in a conical flask or a test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid to this. Do you observe anything happening around the zinc granules? Touch the conical flask or test tube. Is there any change in its temperature? From the above three activities, we can say that any of the following observations helps us to determine whether a chemical reaction has taken place, change in state, change in color, evolution of a gas, or change in temperature. As we observe the changes around us, we can see that there is a large variety of chemical reactions taking place around us. Activity 1 can be described as, when a magnesium ribbon is burnt in oxygen, it gets converted to magnesium oxide. This description of a chemical reaction in a sentence form is quite long. It can be written in a shorter form. The simplest way to do this is to write it in the form of a word equation that is magnesium plus oxygen equals magnesium oxide. The substances that undergo chemical change in the reaction 1, magnesium and oxygen, are the reactants. The new substance is magnesium oxide, formed during the reaction, as a product. A word equation shows change of reactants to products through an arrow placed between them. The reactants are written on the left hand side, LHS, with a plus sign between them. Similarly, products are written on the right hand side that is RHS with a plus sign between them. The arrowhead points towards the products, and shows the direction of the reaction. Now, our next topic is writing a chemical equation. Is there any other shorter way for representing chemical equations? Chemical equations can be made more concise and useful if we use chemical formulae instead of words. A chemical equation represents a chemical reaction. If you recall formulae of magnesium, oxygen and magnesium oxide, the above word equation can be written as 
mg plus O2 equals to mg, O2. Count and compare the number of atoms of each element on the LHS and RHS of the arrow. Is the number of atoms of each element the same on both the sides? If yes, then the equation is balanced. If not, then the equation is unbalanced because the mass is not the same on both sides of the equation. Such a chemical equation is a skeletal chemical equation for a reaction. Equation 2 is a skeletal chemical equation for the burning of magnesium in air. What is balanced chemical equations? Recall the law of conservation of mass that you studied in class 9, mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. That is, the total mass of the elements present in the products of a chemical reaction has to be equal to the total mass of the elements present in the reactants. In other words, the number of atoms of each element remains the same, before and after a chemical reaction. Hence, we need to balance a skeletal chemical equation. Is the chemical equation too balanced? Let us learn about balancing a chemical equation step by step. The chemical equation for activity the third of may be represented as Zn plus H2 so 4 equals to Zn so 4 plus H2. The word equation for activity 3 may be represented as zinc plus sulfuric acid equals zinc sulfate plus hydrogen. Let us examine the number of atoms of different elements on both sides of the arrow. Zn, that is, zinc has one reactants and one products. H that is hydrogen has two reactant and two products. S that is sulfuric has one reactant and one product. O that is oxygen has four reactants and four products. Let us try to balance the following chemical equation, Fe plus H2O equals Fe3O4 plus H2. Step 1, to balance a chemical equation, first draw boxes around each formula. As we have drawn blue color boxes. Do not change anything inside the boxes while balancing the equation. Step 2, list the number of atoms of different elements present in the unbalanced equation. For instance, see the table we have created. Fe that is iron has one number of atoms in reactants and three number of atoms in products. Likewise H that is hydrogen has two number of atoms in reactants and two number of atoms in products. O that is oxygen has one number of atoms in reactants and four number of atoms in products. Step 3, it is often convenient to start balancing with the compound that contains the maximum number of atoms. It may be a reactant or a product. In that compound, select the element which has the maximum number of atoms. Using these criteria, we select Fe3O4 and the element oxygen in it. There are four oxygen atoms on the RHS and only one on the LHS. To balance the oxygen atoms, as we can see H2O that is water has one atom in reactant and four atoms in Fe3O4 at initial stage. To balance them we will multiply 1 into 4 atoms in reactant that is H2O and we will get 4 atoms in product. To equalize the number of atoms, it must be remembered that we cannot alter the formulae of the compounds or elements involved in the reactions. For example, to balance oxygen atoms we can put coefficient 4 as 4 H2O and not H2O4 or H2O4. Now the partly balanced equation becomes Fe that is iron plus H2O that is water is equals to Fe3O4 plus H2. Step 4, Fe that is iron and H that is hydrogen atoms are still not balanced. Pick any of these elements to proceed further. Let us balance hydrogen atoms in the partly balanced equation. To equalize the number of H atoms, make the number of molecules of hydrogen as 4 on the RHS. Then equation would be Fe plus H2O equals to Fe3O4 plus 4H2. Step 5, examine the above equation and pick up the third element which is not balanced. You find that only one element is left to be balanced, that is, iron. To equalize Fe, we take three atoms of Fe on the LHS we will get 3 Fe plus 4H2O equals to Fe3O4 plus 4H2. Step 6, finally, to check the correctness of the balanced equation, we count atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. 
to equalize Fe, we take 3 atoms of Fe on the LHS. Then the equation will be 3 Fe plus 4 H2O equals to Fe 3 O 4 plus 4 H2. The numbers of atoms of elements on both sides of equation are equal. This equation is now balanced. This method of balancing chemical equations is called hit and trial method as we make trials to balance the equation by using the smallest whole number coefficient. Step 7, writing symbols of physical states carefully examine the above balanced equation. Does this equation tell us anything about the physical state of each reactant and product? No information has been given in this equation about their physical states. To make a chemical equation more informative, the physical states of the reactants and products are mentioned along with their chemical formulae. The gaseous, liquid, aqueous and solid states of reactants and products are represented by the notations, G, L, A, Q, and S, respectively. The word aqueous, AQ, is written if the reactant or product is present as a solute on in water. The balanced equation becomes 3 Fe's plus 4 H2O G equals Fe 3 O 4 S plus 4 H2G. 3 Fe, S, plus 4 H2O, G, equals Fe 3 O 4, S, plus 4 H2, G. In this equation symbol, G, is used with H2O to indicate that in this reaction water is used in the form of steam. Usually physical states are not included in a chemical equation unless it is necessary to specify them. Sometimes the reaction conditions, such as temperature, pressure, catalyst, etc., for the reaction are indicated above and or below the arrow in the equation. For example, CO, G, plus 2H2, G, equals CH3OH, L. Another example is 6CO2 plus 12H2O, L, equals C6H12O6 plus 6O2 plus 6H2O, L. We have learnt in class 9 that during a chemical reaction atoms of one element do not change into those of another element. Nor do atoms disappear from the mixture or appear from elsewhere. Actually, Chemical reactions involve the breaking and making of bonds between atoms to produce new substances. You will study about types of bonds formed between atoms in chapters 3 and 4. Now we will study type of chemical equation. There are six types of chemical equations. First one is combination reaction, second one is decomposition reaction. Third one is displacement reaction. Fourth one is double displacement reaction and fifth one is oxidation and reduction. Let us understand these in details. Now, we will be performing an activity that is activity number four. This activity comes under combination reaction. In activity, take a small amount of calcium oxide or quick lime in a beaker. Slowly add water to this. Touch the beaker as shown in figure. Do you feel any change in temperature? The video that you have seen is a part of combination reaction. In combination reaction, calcium oxide reacts vigorously with water to produce slaked lime, calcium hydroxide, releasing a large amount of heat. The chemical equation formed by this reaction is CaO, S, plus H2O, I, is equals to Ca, O, H2, Aq, plus heat. In this reaction, calcium oxide and water combine to form a single product, calcium hydroxide. Such a reaction in which a single product is formed from two or more reactants is known as a combination reaction. Now, moving on to next activity that is activity number 5. In this activity, take about 2 gram of ferrous sulfate crystals in a dry boiling tube. Slowly add water to this. Note the color of the ferrous sulfate crystals. Heat the boiling tube over the flame of a burner or spirit lamp as shown in figure. Observe the color of the crystals after heating. The video you have seen was a part of decomposition reaction. Have you noticed that the green color of the ferrous sulfate crystals has changed? You can also smell the characteristic odor of burning sulfur. The chemical equation for the reaction will be 2FeSO4, S, plus heat equals to Fe2O3, S, plus SO2, G, plus SO3, G. 
In this reaction you can observe that a single reactant breaks down to give simpler products. This is a decomposition reaction. Ferrous sulfate crystals, FeSO4, 7H2O, lose water when heated and the color of the crystals changes. It then decomposes to ferric oxide, Fe2O3, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and sulfur trioxide, SO3. Ferric oxide is a solid, while SO2 and SO3 are gases. Moving on next activity that is activity 6. This is a part of displacement reaction. To complete this reaction, take three iron nails and clean them by rubbing with sandpaper. Take two test tubes marked as A and B. In each test tube, take about 10 ml copper sulfate solution. Tie two iron nails with a thread and immerse them carefully in the copper sulfate solution in test tube B for about 20 minutes. Keep one iron nail aside for comparison. After 20 minutes, take out the iron nails from the copper sulfate solution. Compare the intensity of the blue color of copper sulfate solutions in test tubes, A, and, B. Also, compare the color of the iron nails dipped in the copper sulfate solution with the one kept aside. In displacement reaction, can you guess, why does the iron nail become brownish in color and the blue color of copper sulfate solution fades? To know the answer, we need to go through the chemical equation formed by this reaction. Fe, S, plus CuSO4, Aq, equals to FeSO4, Aq, plus Cu, S. In this reaction, iron has displaced or removed another element, copper, from copper sulfate solution. This reaction is known as displacement reaction. Moving on to another activity that is activity number 7. This activity is a part of double displacement reaction. To perform this activity, take about 3 ml of sodium sulfate solution in a test tube. In another test tube, take about 3 ml of barium chloride solution. Mix the two solutions. What do you observe? In double displacement reaction activity, you will observe that a white substance, which is insoluble in water, is formed. This insoluble substance formed is known as a precipitate. Any reaction that produces a precipitate can be called a precipitation reaction. The chemical equation formed is, Na2SO4 plus BaCl2 is equals to BaSO4 plus 2 NaCl. What causes this? The white precipitate of BaSO4 is formed by the reaction of SO2 and 4 and Ba2 plus. The other product formed is sodium chloride which remains in the solution. Such reactions in which there is an exchange of ions between the reactants are called double displacement reactions. Now, let us go through another activity, which is a part of oxidation and reduction. To perform this activity, heat a china dish containing about 1 gram of copper powder as shown in figure. What do you observe? In oxidation and reduction, the surface of copper powder becomes coated with black copper 2, oxide. Why has this black substance formed? This is because oxygen is added to copper and copper oxide is formed. 2 Cu plus O2 plus heat equals to 2 CuO. If hydrogen gas is passed over this heated material, CuO, the black coating on the surface turns brown as the reverse reaction takes place and copper is obtained. CuO plus H2 plus heat equals Cu plus H2O. If a substance gains oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized. If a substance loses oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be reduced. Have you observed the effects of oxidation reaction in everyday life? Let us understand what is corrosion. You must have observed that iron articles are shiny when new, but get coated with a reddish brown powder when left for some time. This process is commonly known as rusting of iron. Some other metals also get tarnished in this manner. Have you noticed the color of the coating formed on copper and silver? When a metal is attacked by substances around it such as moisture, acids, etc., it is said to corrode and this process is called corrosion. 
The black coating on silver and the green coating on copper are other examples of corrosion. Corrosion causes damage to car bodies, bridges, iron railings, ships and to all objects made of metals, especially those of iron. Corrosion of iron is a serious problem. Every year an enormous amount of money is spent to replace damaged iron. You will learn more about corrosion in Chapter 3. What is rancidity? Have you ever tasted or smelt the fat or oil containing food materials left for a long time? When fats and oils are oxidized, they become rancid and their smell and taste change. Usually substances which prevent oxidation, antioxidants, are added to foods containing fats and oil. Keeping food in airtight containers helps to slow down oxidation. Do you know that chips manufacturers usually flush bags of chips with gas such as nitrogen to prevent the chips from getting oxidized? Let us quickly revise what we have learned from this video. A complete chemical equation represents the reactants, products and their physical states symbolically. A chemical equation is balanced so that the numbers of atoms of each type involved in a chemical reaction are the same on the reactant and product sides of the equation. Equations must always be balanced. In a combination reaction two or more substances combine to form a new single substance. Decomposition reactions are opposite to combination reactions. In a decomposition reaction, a single substance decomposes to give two or more substances. Reactions in which heat is given out along with the products are called exothermic reactions. Reactions in which energy is absorbed are known as endothermic reactions. When an element displaces another element from its compound, a displacement reaction occurs. Two different atoms or groups of atoms, ions, are exchanged in double displacement reactions. Precipitation reactions produce insoluble salts. Reactions also involve the gain or loss of oxygen or hydrogen by substances. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen or loss of hydrogen. Reduction is the loss of oxygen or gain of hydrogen. This video was co-presented by RAG of Tuition Center. RAG of Tuition Center is offering best tuition services in southwest of Delhi. Our faculty are from world best institutes such as KVS, NVS and DPS. Students studying at our center have secured more than 75% of marks in every academic year. We offer tuition service for class 6th to class 10th at affordable price. On 1st of May 2021, we are offering free online demo class for class 10th students for the subject Mathematics and Science. To enroll for the demo classes, kindly WhatsApp your name. Google email ID and mobile number 28901127595. For more inquiries, kindly call us or WhatsApp us at 89010127595. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked our video, then like, share our video and to watch more videos, please subscribe to our channel. To receive notification on latest video update, press the bell icon.